Okay, how do you guys feel about that? Sucked. I have some work to do. That's all right. So on the, the examples, you were looking for the specific type rather than words themselves. Yeah. A uh, specific I'd... way? Okay. I That's why I gave you half of it, but... Yeah, I was looking like for, for specifically there. masculine singular plural. I was going to give you an plural. example of an English one word masculine that one the answers were singular plural or neuter. Right. Yeah, and if you had, if you'd put like, like, like all every. Yeah, if you'd put something that was like a singular version and then a plural version of that same word, oh, okay. then I would have been, okay, been yeah. full credit. But all right. I see how it is. Yeah. <laughs> Hundred and five wasn't enough for you. <laughs> Wait till I grade your first paper, Stephen. What'd you do? Hundred five. Hey, I got a ninety-three, and I'm happy. What'd you get? All right. Uh, today is a bear. This is going to be the first time where the, the fog is just going to be so thick you could cut it with a knife. Uh, really? The others have it? Oh, I guess yeah. that's me. Uh, but you get through this, and you come back next week, and you're not dead, then the rest is pretty much smooth sailing okay. until you get past what this course is going to cover. So, uh, I'm so. kind of already dead, but not from this class. <laughs> But we'll, we're going to start with review vocab, and then we'll uh, we'll jump into the new material. So, start out with review from last week. So this is essentially what your uh, what your quiz was over. Uh, the eight Greek li- eight Greek diphthongs: uh, I, A, Al, U, Oi, We, U, and Heu. Right. Uh, and we talked about improper diphthongs. That's where the, the iota drops down, makes a, a subscript, right? Talked about those things. Uh, everybody fairly confident with that? You understand that's one vowel s- sound. So that helps with your syllabification when you're trying to pronounce words. You gotta recognize your diphthongs or you're gonna be pronouncing words funky and it's so gonna be hard. You said hey you? Yeah, hey you. What's, what's oh, okay. the word? Give me an English word on the example on the... And there really isn't one. Uh, okay. That's why they, they give you that, the example of the, the two words, hey, you, yeah. said really fast together. That's but, right. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Uh, Iota subscripts are going to come back next week when we get into the dative case. Fine. But uh, don't worry about those too much for now. We went over the accents, right? You all got those pretty well, I think. Acute, grave, and circumflex. And the two different ways you can write circumflex doesn't mean anything different. Uh, and I think most of you picked the way I like the best, too, just the half hoop. That, that's an easier way to do it. Yeah. Like... yeah. Yeah, it's easier to write. It's easier to recognize, I think. Uh, and we talked about cases in English nouns, and we talked about some, some intro to noun things and what they look like in English. And that was where we ended last week, uh, hoping that you get those down well going into this. It makes the, the tough material today a lot easier to grasp. But uh, an example of case, so... A case is the function of a word in a sentence. It is, is, its case is, uh, determines its function. So, Bill threw the ball. Bill is the subject in that sentence. He is the one who's doing the verb. He's the one throwing. So, he's the subject. Uh, the object would be the thing that is being done by the verb. The thing that the d- verb is being done to. The ball is the object in that simple sentence. Uh, we have another case in English, possession. So that's Bill's ball. Bill's is in the possessive case there. And the word his, it's his. Uh, that's also in the possessive case. So that's when one thing, one thing possesses another. So those are the three basic cases in English. They're, those get broken down into lots more complex ones, but those, those are the big overarching cases. And we're going to look at two of the five Greek cases today. So this is why this this is why it gets a little bit tricky. You got to have that concept down, uh, and we need clarification further on cases in English and how what a case is for a noun. We'll we'll keep going and be talking about it all day. So hopefully the the concept will develop as we go through. We also talked about number. So there's there's number in English nouns. Every, every English noun has a number, and there's two numbers, singular or plural. Uh, in our example, Bill through the balls, balls would be plural, whereas Bill through the ball, ball is singular. 
And there's gender. There's three genders in English and in Greek. Uh, masculine, feminine, or neuter. Those are the three genders. And they do not have anything necessarily to do with the thing itself. Uh, in, in English and in Greek uh, and most languages, uh, gender is just randomly assigned to the, the noun in question. Uh, it's a completely linguistic term. It has nothing to do with male and female sexes. Like I said, it's a pet peeve of mine. Uh, people have sex, words have gender. That's, that's how it works. <laughs> Nobody in here has a gender. Everybody in here has a sex. But, uh, that ship has sailed for our <laughs> society. <laughs> uh, we're going to look through the review. So if you want to pull out your review books, the, or the, your workbooks. That's for the next class. Re review number one was your homework. You're also supposed to be reading First John 1, verses 5. Yeah, I, uh... Through 2, 5. Huh. And it's okay. Uh, Jonathan uh, expressed to me, and it's really... I can sound them out individually, but when I see them all together, it, it's almost overwhelming, right? You just yeah. start... You stop being able to do it, so... You gotta really break... And it might help if you just cover them up with your fingers when you're getting started. Sure. Just here you go. I got Kai, to like the first five lines. Estin. Haute. Hey. Etc. Uh... So that was the first part of your homework. That was the really important part. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the first three verses and try and read along with me. It'll be a little bit quicker, but try and process the, the sounds, okay? Kai estin haute he angelia hain ak ake ka amen ap autu kai angelamen humit. Hati ha theos, fos estin kai skatia en auto, uk estin udemia. Ean epomen hati koinonian, ekamen met autu, kai en to skote, peripatomen, pseuda metha, kai. U poyumen tain alethean. Ean de en to foti peripatomen hos autos estin en to foti. Koinanian ekamen met alelon kai tahema Jesus tu huiu autu katherice. Hamas apa passes hamartias. Everybody generally be able to follow along? You lost me the, I can't say it, the, the alpha iota mu alpha. The uh, next to the last line. The next to the last line? Yeah. It's like right above where Hema. one seven ends. Yeah, so that's got a, a circumflex and a rough breathing mark. Right, so over the diphthong right. alpha the yoke. So, Chaima. yeah, Chaima. Chaima. And yeah, Chaima What's would be... Okay. Yeah. Blood. Blood, yes. Alright, so yeah, the more you practice reading it, the more the rest of it comes naturally. The uh, vocabulary ahead. Oh, okay, so not funny. As far as... Review number one, uh, the questions and things. I got them up here. So, what is a gamma nasal? How's it pronounced? It's two G's, a G and a K, a G and an A. It's pronounced like an N. Mm. It's a gamma, 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 or gamma kappa, or gamma chi, or gamma C, and the first one's pronounced like an N. Mm. Yeah. You got it. But it's usually the Usually the double gamut, yes. <laughs> two vowels. What's a diphthong? The diphthong is two vowels that produce one sound. Two vowels that produce one sound. Yes. Yeah, that's what I wrote. What is an improper diphthong? 
Yoda. 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 Oh, when, when the diuresis. diuresis. Yeah. Or how, how do you say it? Diuresis. I say diuresis. I think you might be right. Uh, diuresis. Is. There's not a specific name for that, though, other than diuresis. No. Yeah. It's just. Uh, give an example, or what, describe when an apostrophe is used. When when do you see an apostrophe in Greek? Yeah. It's used when a final vowel has been dropped. To smooth the reading. So, for example, apa and mu and ap and mu. There was an example of that in the reading, right? There was, yeah. I think there were two. Uh, the, on the first line? Yes. Apa to or apa to. Apa to, yeah. Apa to would be. That's the first one we read. Yeah. How are the two sigmas used in one word? And it's just. And the S is at the end. And then the other one is at every, everywhere else. Good. And I just gave an example. Apos. Talos. That means apostle. Yeah. Or envoy. Or messenger. Yeah, that too, but... Yeah, yeah, you mean sent one. So far, I've never seen the... They both mean messenger. The middle sigma or whatever. I haven't seen it at the beginning. Yeah. There was in the reading. Uh, the word scotia. End of the second line. Oh, okay. Very last word. Uh, give an example of a smooth and rough breathing mark. You all did that pretty well in the quiz. Right. Smooth okay. opens left, rough opens right. See, I, I have to think of it the other way. Rough is left, rough is opposite of right. Oh, okay. Whatever works, don't let me confuse you. Uh, smooth is an apostrophe and the rough is not. Uh, there is this matching section, so to match the punctuation mark with its function. Uh, a goes to comma, B goes to period, C goes to semicolon, D goes to question mark. What? And number eight, you're supposed to draw a line, but I couldn't <laughs> gotcha. do that as well. I now that I think about it, I probably could have, but I didn't bother doing that. So. Uh, and then match the appropriate mark with its proper name. A is circumflex, B is the acute, C is the grave. You all did that real well on your quizzes. How does an accent affect translation? Causing inflection. Well, uh, or changes emphasizing the letter. It just, yeah, it's, it emphasizes the letter you pronounce. It almost never changes the translation. There's very few oh, words where the accent actually changes the meaning of a word the way you would translate it. Uh, the accent just changes the pronunciation of the word. So where the accent is tells you what syllable to stress. So just stress the For our purposes, it doesn't change the, the translation. We won't get to any of the words where the accent matters. You know, I thought it was cool how he says that there were... 319 words that we're going to memorize mm -hmm. because it's, those are the it's 80 percent of the New Testament. Yeah. And then what I, what I appreciate about what he said, he said, so learn those words, and if you want to learn any more, make sure you do like Bible study and other stuff first before you <laughs> start going to Greek. If you really want to Greek, but more important things need to be done first. Yeah. I appreciate that. Okay. Yeah, like, and he actually he'll give you the running total of the percentage yeah. of the the word usages in the New Testament that you've learned as you go through the chapter. So that's really nice to track your progress. Ever feel good on review? Or at least okay on review? I'm happy to hang out and keep going over stuff uh, and meet up during the week if we need to. So. Uh, we'll move on. So new material. First of all, there's only one vocabulary word for, day, for today. The rest we'll encounter as we go. But this is the one that is funky. It's the word declension. So everybody say declension. Declension. Declension, declension is a group of forms or case endings that follow a similar pattern. And we're going to learn what case endings are in just a second. Uh, endings on a word that follow a similar form or pattern. 
And we're going to learn about two of the declensions today, first and second declension. And generally, declensions match the gender that they're associated with. Feminine for first declension, masculine and neuter for second declension. Uh, this is a word that grammarians made up to try and help you systematize the Greek language. They, they, they got all these words together and they say, these words all seem to follow this same pattern, so we're, these are going to be first declension nouns. And then they got all these other words together and they say, these all have similar endings when the way they're used. We're going to call these second declension nouns. And they got all these other ones, they say, we don't know what to do with these, throw them into the third declension. Uh, we're not going to worry about the third declension, I don't think at all in this class. Uh, we're going to go over the first and second declension, and we're going to see those today. Uh, but just, when you hear the word declension, just think, group of similar, s similar uh, ending to nouns. So would first and second be like male and female? Uh, Flip-flop those. Generally, first declension nouns are feminine. Second declension nouns are masculine. And they're masculine and feminine, not male and female. <laughs> Pet peeve. But, uh, all right. Also need to know the parts of a Greek word. So this is where the trickiness starts to set in. So we're going to go with a word that hopefully you all know pretty well, logos. It's one of my favorite words. It's the word. The word. So the, the word became flesh. And dwelt among us, the Lagos, became flesh. All right. All Greek words, noun, verb, what, whatever, uh, uh, adjective, uh, they, they all have a stem. And there's two different systems for learning the stems of words. You can either learn the first few letters that uh, up to the, this, this guy is the one in question, the, the second Omicron is the one in question. Uh, are, it, does the stem include the Omicron or does it exclude the Omicron? That's the debate. So when I talk about stems, I'm going with this first view that says the Omicron is part of the case ending, the thing that changes, okay? Uh, but the stem is going to be usually the first couple letters of the lexical form of the word. So the stem of logos is log. Then you got case endings, which is the rest of the word, and sometimes the beginning of the word. And there might be letters tacked onto the front end, but we won't worry about those yet. You're not going to see any, any of those case endings yet. Uh, os is a case ending for the word logos. Okay? And then, like I said, there's this question mark thing. It's called the connecting vowel. It's the second Omicron. Which one does that go with the stem? Is it part of the case ending? It's, is it its own little thing? I treat it as part of the case ending. That just makes more sense to me. That stems usually end in a, in a consonant most often, and so uh, your case endings start in a vowel most often. Uh, it just keeps them more orderly, the way I, I view Greek. Uh, Mounts will usually refer to it the other way. He'll talk about the stem of logos would be loga, and in the case the ending would be just the sigma. It's hard for me to memorize just the letter sigma for a case ending, I can't pronounce that. So when I'm trying to learn case endings, declensions of case endings, which we're about to see, uh, I want to be able to say os instead of s. It, it helps me phonetically say, okay, the, the case ending is os and on and o and own, etc. And that'll make a little bit more sense as we get closer. But for right now, just, no, there's, there's a stem and there's a case ending. And when I talk about it, the case ending is uh, including that connecting vowel. All right. Uh, if that doesn't make sense yet, we'll circle back to it, and uh, hopefully by the end of this lesson, that'll be like, oh, okay, I'm with you. Yes, mm -hmm. stems and case endings. Those are parts of Greek words. This is where the inflection thing becomes really important. We talked about inflection. Inflection is changes in a word that change its meaning. So an inflected form of the word logos would be log on. So the thing that changed is the case ending. It went from Omicron Sigma to Omicron Nu. 
that changed the meaning a little bit. And what it did was it changed the case. So where this is the subject, this is the object. And we're going to get into that and hopefully understand that a little bit better. So you're going to see words, their stems will stay relatively the same, but their case endings will change all over the place. And that's what makes Greek a hard language to learn, because there's so much inflection, so much changing in the case ending. And so what did you say about the, okay, you said something about inflection, was the on versus the os. Right. Inf inflection is the change in a word okay. to represent a change in function of the change word. Change in function, okay. Not necessarily the definition of the function. Correct. Okay. Changes the, the meaning in the sentence, the way it's, it's functioning in the sentence. Okay. But the definition would remain the same. But the way you would translate it maybe change a little bit. We'll, we'll be repeating this a few times. So let's go into some of the Greek cases, and then we'll, we'll see how this lines up. When we get, and there's a slide, I think, that will help a lot hammer that home. Uh, these are the five noun cases in Greek. So remember, our cases in English would be subject, possession, object. Okay. In Greek, these are the names of your cases. Nominative, that's the subject case. Genitive, or the, the ofness case. Dative, the to-ness or withness case. Don't worry about those two. We're going to talk about those next week. Those are the confusing ones that make Greek really, really fun. Uh, the accusative is the object case, just like we have in English. And the vocative is the direct address case. Uh, I'm going to watch the screen. It's me change, okay? So, the ones we're looking at are the nominative and the accusative. Notice I crossed out the vocative. Uh, you almost never see the vocative case in the Greek New Testament. It's kind of going out of style at that point. There's only 316 occurrences of it in the New Testament, and there's about 28,000 of the others. So, gives you a an indication of, of how important it is. We won't learn the vocative at all. So for our purposes, there's only four cases we've got to worry about. Nominative, genitive, dative, accusative. Everybody say those with me. Nominative, genitive, dative, accusative. Right. Nominative is the subject. Accusative is the object. And those are the two cases we're going to learn, learn about today. Everybody with me so far? Relatively so. Okay. Going back to the parts of a Greek word, particularly the parts of a Greek noun, every noun you see in a sentence has a case, a number, and a gender. It lets you know how it's functioning in the sentence. And the way you identify the case, the number, and the gender, whether it's masculine or feminine, whether it's singular or plural, whether it's the object or the subject, is by the case ending, that os, us, on. You see how logos, the, the stem didn't change, but the case ending did. So logos, the case is nominative, the gender is masculine, and the number is singular. Right? Logus, the case is nominative, the gender is masculine, and the number is plural. Log on. The case is accusative. The gender is masculine, and the number is singular. All I'm trying to show you here is that what, there are things changing based on the case ending. You don't need. To, we're going to learn how you recognize them in a second. You with me? Kind of. Not really. Like, well, I get it, kind of, but I'm also like. I'm so. Okay, yeah, so do a little bit of critical thinking. What, what things changed when those different case endings changed? The case and the number. The case and the number. What stayed the same? The gender. The gender. Gender never changes in a noun. Gender of a noun never changes. So whatever the noun is, if it's masculine, it's always going to be masculine. If it's feminine, it's always going to be feminine. Okay. feminine. What the case ending does is it changes the case and the number for you. So uh, go back. Yeah. Um, so nominative would be word and words, and that that like 
Yes, the way you would translate all of these would be word, word words, words, and word. It would just be, we're going to see that in a second. So, would, be, would that be like word, word this sentence this way? Yes, yeah, so the case in English is determined by word order. Basically, it, it becomes a verb. No, it's, it's still a noun. Right. It, well, right. well, actually, right. there'll, there'll be an example once we get right. through this I'll that'll really clear this up, I think. But it's word, so. words, and then word. Again. And word. But, yeah. Yeah. We'll see, we'll see some examples of that in just a second uh, that I think should help. Uh, the gender of a noun never changes. And so when you're reading your uh, vocab words and he gives you that little uh, ha or he or uh, ta afterward, that he's telling you what the gender of the word is. We're going to learn about um, those articles okay. in a second. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the number and the case change with the ending. So... Uh, actually, let's skip ahead. Right now, let's let's go through the nominative and, and accusative case, and then we'll we'll, we'll go to the the examples that kind of clear it up. Uh, the nominative case. So, this is a this is a chart you're going to want to get real familiar with. You're going to see this quite often. Uh, this is a way to just summarize, put all of the different case endings for nouns. Uh, right here, easy to see. Uh, notice the nominative singular. So you got singulars on top and plurals on bottom. And you got nominative, genitive, dative, accusative, nominative, de genitive, dative, accusative. Okay? See how the chart functions? And then you got your declension, tells you what the declension is second, first, second. So these groups of nouns all form similarly and these nouns all form similarly they follow the same pattern and then it tells you what the gender is masculine feminine and neuter so generally speaking feminine nouns are first declension and generally speaking masculine nouns are second declension generally speaking neuter nouns are second declension We'll learn a couple exam or exceptions to that throughout the semester. But don't worry about them right now. So everybody say these, these noun endings with me. The nominative singular masculine noun ending is os. The nominative singular feminine noun ending is a. The nominative singular neuter noun ending is on. The nominative plural masculine noun ending is oi. The nominative plural feminine noun ending is I. The nominative plural, I should say, second declension neuter ending is ah. Okay, watch what's, what's going to change. We're going to throw the word law, the, the stem in so you can see how they're formed in an actual word. Okay? All right. It's got three different Greek words. Why is that? Because the word is never changes gender. gender. Yeah, and it never changes gender. So... Logos is a masculine second declension noun. So it's a good word that we can use as what we call a paradigm. A uh, word that you can learn the endings on. Simple word. You say, okay, log os. So when you're memorizing the nominative singular, you go log os. Okay. When you're memorizing the nominative plural, you go log oi. Okay. And that helps you to remember the ending that goes with it. Same with graphe and graphi. One is singular, one is plural. They're both in the subjective, the nominative case. Same with ergon. I think that might be a new word for you. That means work. Ergon. Ergonomic. Exactly. Same root word. Uh, ergon is the nominative singular neuter, and erga is the nominative plural neuter. So that's just the nominative case Second and first declension, masculine, feminine, and neuter nouns. And you got the singular and the plural. Everybody see how the chart's working? Just organizing all of these different case endings for you. The other, the other case we're going to look at today is the accusative. So the accusative case, the singular masculine ending is on. The feminine singular accusative ending is ain. The neuter accusative ending is on. So notice that the masculine and the neuter have the same case ending.
for uh, their their accusative singular forms. Uh, that's why they're both second declension. They follow the same general patterns. There's only a few small changes. They're second declension nouns. Accused of plural. Uh, second declension masculine is us, accused of plural. First declension feminine is os, accused of plural. Second declension neuter is a. Ah. So you know, os, a, on, on, ain, on, oi, i, a, us, os, a. Ah. Those are easier for me to remember than uh, if you were learning this Mouse's way, where the stem is part of the vowel, you'd be learning s. Mm. 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 It. 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 It's harder to learn. If you put the, the connecting vowel in with it, it makes it easier to vocalize it. So this is what they look like with the words thrown in there. So you can see them on a word. Okay. So everybody say the nominative, or give me the, the second declension masculine, nominative accusative, nominative accusative, all right? Lagos, lagon, lagoy, lagus. Are you with me? Let's go to the feminine first declension. Grafe, grafane, grafi, grafos. Good. Uh, neuter. Ergon, ergon. Erga, erga. What did you notice about the neuter? They repeat themselves. Yeah. Accusative and nominative are formed the same in both the singular and the plural. How do you know the difference? Context. Context of the sentence will tell you, is this functioning as the object of the sentence, or is this functioning as the subject of the sentence? So as you're reading a sentence and you come across a neuter noun and you have to ask yourself, wait a second, is that the nominative or the accusative? You look at the rest of the sentence and you go, oh, oh yeah, okay. That's, so. uh, and we do this in English all the time. So it's just a matter of practice. Uh, you'll, you'll get it. So let's look at the nominative accusative cases in English and in Greek. I think this is going to help, Okay. Yeah, so we got this English sentence, Jesus hit the man. Why would Jesus hit the man? Oh, that's that's, that's, well, he did it if when he was turning over the tables, right? He went around with a whip and was, was whipping people. Uh, so, Jesus hit the man. The subject of the sentence, the one doing the action, is Jesus. The object of the sentence, the one receiving the action, is the man. In English, that's determined by word order. If you were to reverse these, if you were to say the man hit Jesus, the subject is now the man, the object is now Jesus. And you see how the word order determines the function of, in the sentence. The, I'm going to say that again. The word order determines the function of the noun in the sentence. Okay. In Greek, because of inflection, because of case endings, uh, the word order does not matter as much. The function of the word stays the same. It's determined by the ending on the noun, not its place in the sentence. You with me? So, Jesus, if we find a Greek word for hit, tananthropon, Jesus is in the nominative case, so it's the subject. Tananthropon is in the accusative case, so it's the object. And if you were to reverse those, tananthropon hit Jesus, it would still be translated the exact same way, Jesus hit the man. Because Jesus is the subject in both cases. Word order doesn't affect that. Does that kind of clear a little bit of it up? Mm -hmm. Help you understand the, the case thing? What is a, So a case tells you the function in the sentence. Is it the subject or is it the object in terms of nominative and accusative? So then how do you know where to put words in sentences? Or do you just put them wherever? You, so that frees you up. In Greek, if you're... You're saying if you're constructing your own sentences? If you're constructing your own sentences in Greek, uh, you can use the word order to change the emphasis. If you want to make it clear that God is the important part of this, but he's the object in the sentence, you can still put tantheon first in the sentence, even though when you translate it into English, you have to put it last, because that's the object. So you're free to emphasize which way the sentence goes on Correct. what you're trying to stress. Is the emphasis on the verb that, that somebody's doing? Or is the, the emphasis on the one doing it, or is right. the emphasis on the one receiving the action of the verb? 
word order, you can do that. You put it first. That helps you emphasize. It, make, it, it makes for a much more creative thought process while you're constructing sentences. But uh, In English, we're bound by the word order a lot more. Case is largely determined by word order in English. So we would have to translate both of those as Jesus hit the man. I don't know if this goes along with what you're saying, but does that mean that Greek is more of an emotional type language? Uh, because the way you can emphasize different words grammatically? You could probably say that. Uh, I would say both of them are equally emotional. It's just the way that you express the emotion would be different. Okay. Greek is a quite technical language. There's a whole lot of case endings, and yeah. so you can. Yes, I can see that, but also I'm just wondering that you emphasize that because yeah. sometimes the beginning of the sentences can be more emotional than the end. Exactly. That so. yeah, and it, it helps you be more creative with your language. That once you master the language, you can be much more. Yeah, uh, that's the word I'm talking about. Everybody fairly clear on nominative, accusative, what they mean, how they work. So let's look back at this this chart. So when you see the word logos, that's the subject of a sentence. When you see the word graphe, that's the subject of a sentence. Because of the case ending, os, a, on. But if you were to see the word log on, that's the object of the sentence. If you see the word graphane, that's the object of a sentence because of the case in it. doesn't matter where in the sentence it is. That's, that's nominative and accusative case. So that's all we're going to look at for those today. The last thing that we got to power through, and this is where I'd, I wanted you to learn this quick, because if you learn this next part quick, if you learn it early, it makes learning the cases, how they work, and using them a lot easier down the road. So what we're going to learn next is the definite article. Okay. Everybody say, THE definite article. The reason I have it in all caps is because it tells you what it is. The definite article is the word THE. In English, we have definite and indefinite articles. The definite article is the word THE. What's the indefinite article? A. A. The word A or AN. If, it, if the next word starts with about. Uh, Greek doesn't have an indefinite article. It only has the definite article. It only has the word the. If there is no definite article, then you supply the indefinite article yourself, where appropriate. It's the word the in Greek, uh, in, in English, excuse me, that's the definite article. The definite article in Greek can be attached to any noun. There is no indefinite article. But it must agree with the noun it's attached to in case, number, and gender. Very important. You underline that, bold it, however you want. Your article must agree with the noun that it's attached to in case, number, and gender. So if you want to take the word the and attach it to the word logos, so the word. If you wanted to say the word in Greek, you would say ha logos. That's how you say the word in the nominative case. But well, what if the word logos gets changed to logon, it's in the accusative case, and your article has to change with it. It has to agree in case, number, and gender. Therefore, we have to have a different definite article for every case, number, and gender combination that there is. Every one of these boxes has to have its own definite article, because when the word logos is used with the definite article, it has to be different, matching, with than when the word graphe is used. All that to say, here's the definite article. This is the thing you got to memorize today. It's the definite article. So this is the big one. Yep. Are you handing out papers? Of yes. Okay, just making sure. <laughs> Good question. So... Everybody, we're going to go across the row, and we're going to pronounce the definite article together, okay? So, ha, ha hey, hey, ta, ta, ta tu, 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 taste, taste tu, tu, to, to te, te, to, to, to ton, ton, tain, ta, 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 say that again, ta, 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 
tone, tone, tone. Toys, 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 toys. Toos, toss, ta. Okay. This is how you write the word the in Greek. There's a bunch of different ways to write it. At least some of them are the same. Yeah. Yeah. So let's try and find some things that are similar so that we can we can Why match so them, make them easier to learn. Why so many? So that they'll match their their noun in case number and gender. Because oh. if the noun changes case, it's got to change with it. Okay. And we only have to worry about the uh, nominative and the accusative, right? On this one, you got to learn the whole chart at once. And that's going to help, that's why, I'm, that's why I'm saying you learn this now, it's going to help you down the road. Because if you learn these really well, this is, should be something my, my Greek professor uses this to, uh, it's, it's like, you should, you should be going ha, he, ta, two, to, two takes two, uh, ha, he, ta, ha, he, ta, over and over and over again, to the point where if you were to get into a car accident and your brain got smashed in and they took you to the hospital and they cut into your brain, they'd open it up and they'd go, what's, what's this, ha, he, ta, what? What's going on? That's how ingrained it should be. Just ha he ta, two taste two, to te to, ta te ta. Uh, if you memorize this well, so much easier recognizing words later. Because when you get started into reading Greek, you're going to have to be able to recognize logos as a nominative singular masculine like that and continue with the sentence. But when you see the, the letter ha logos, ha tells you right away. Now I'm just singular masculine. Okay. I found the nom I found the subject of the sentence. It's the one with the word ha in front of it. So if you learn your articles well, it helps you. If you learn these, it helps you in finding and identifying your nouns later. Uh, if you if you get to the word graphe or graphi, but it says high graphi. You just recognize the little, the, the two little letters, hi. Oh yeah, that's nominative plural femi feminine, uh, the word the. Okay, so that's the nominative, that's the subject of the sentence. There's a little, so trying to, a couple things to, to recognize. They, they follow the same, the same endings. I wish I had, actually I'll pass these out now so you can look at them. Uh, their endings are very similar to the Noun endings that we just saw in the nominative and the accusative, and in the genitive and the dative. Uh, if you look at the second page of these notes, you've got graphs of everything, all of these that we've thrown up on the board. Uh, So if you look at the second page with, with all these charts for you to help, help you memorize, let's start looking for some similarities in the endings and the articles. Uh, so first of all, neuter. Nominative and singular stays the same, or nominative and accusative stays the same in the singular. Ta and ta. Same as the ending, ergon, 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 right? Right? Uh, they, they stay the same in both cases. Uh, same with the plural, ta and ta, only spelled with an alpha instead of an omicron. Uh, pronounced almost exactly the same. Uh, you look at the, the feminine, first declension. Tain, you look at your feminine graphane. You see the similar ending, ain, ain, tain, graphane. Uh, and a, he, with his grafe, same ending. He, a. You look down in the plural of the second declension. Hi, and tos. Grafi, grafos. So you see how the, the definite article matches, seems very similar to the noun that's once it's been inflected. So they're going to match. Uh, Lagon, ton, logon. See how the, the article ends with the same two letters as the 
inflected noun. Ton lagon. Uh, hoi lagoi, nominative plural. That would be the words. Hoi lagoi. Tus lagus. See how this has the same ending. So you learn this and you've memorized all of your noun endings. That's why I'm having you do this now. This is on page 46. It's chart 710 in your books. That's the chart you, you need to memorize. And there's a little mnemonic device to help, help you do it. Uh, it's a song to help you learn your definite article. And it's the article song. It's to the tune of To God Be the Glory. You guys know that, that, that hymn? So here's the song, okay? It's... Greek things we have not taught us, Greek things we have learned, and the definite article must not be spurned. Commit it to memory, you soon will believe that most of your Greek tensions will be relieved. Ha he ta, tu te su, to te to, ton tain ta, hoi hai ta, ton ton ton, toist ta toist tus tas ta. Commit it to memory, you soon will believe that most of your Greek tensions will be relieved. So it really helped until we got to the Greek part. <laughs> and where can we see this? Uh, uh, it's just it? up here. I didn't, I didn't actually put it. Just Google it. I don't know. Oh, uh, yeah, probably Google it. Huh? Uh, Google it. You guys want to sing it? We'll sing it a little bit slower. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, well, you know, I'm already <laughs> recording it. <laughs> It'll be up on the website. Two, two, yeah. One, two, Greek things they have taught us. Greek things we have learned. And the definite article must not be spurned. Commit it to memory, you soon will believe that most of your Greek tensions will be relieved. Ha he ta, tu te su, to te to, ton te ta, hoi hai ta, ton ton ton, toist tais toist, tus tas ta. Commit it to memory, you soon will believe that most of your Greek tensions will be relieved. Nice job. <laughs> Welcome to Greek. <laughs> so. So, heads up, give you a clue into the quiz next week. It's this. Oh, God. Reproduce this chart. Ha he ta, tu te su, to te to, ton tain ta. Boy hai ta, ton ton ton, tois tais ta, tois tus tas ta. Uh... That's the way that they taught me in seminary, in undergrad. The way I learned it was just memorizing this. Hakutota. Almost like, almost like I'm, I'm sneezing. Hakutota. <laughs> uh, and it, it helped me remember those endings. Ha, tu, to, ton. Okay. And after that, I could just kind of work it out. I remembered the rest. It's so. like Mexican city, cities. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Like, do you know Teplon? Oh, yeah. Whatever. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, the breathing marks are essential to the spelling, right? So, ha and he, hoi and hi. Those are part of the spelling. You don't have to worry about the accents if you don't want to. It really sounds clean. Yeah. You sound clean, yeah. Mrs. Bailey. So yeah, whichever one works for you, memorizing across, ha he ta, tu te su, or memorizing down the row, whichever one helps you remember it better. But you need to be able to remember what it is. So if, if I say, uh, what is to, you have to be able to tell me it's the dative, singular, masculine, or neuter definite article. If I say, what's tice? You have to be able to say, oh, that's the dative, plural, feminine, first declension, uh, definite article. Excuse me, just feminine, it's not first declension, just feminine. I was just about to say declension. Yeah, declension is not. Don't worry about it.
Uh, that'll solidify if we don't. You sound like that guy from Oriental Garden. Or not Oriental Garden. Oriental Garden. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm talking about uh, Mongolian. So, Mongolian. Yeah. Memorization homework is to memorize the whole definite article. Okay. And you, what you'll realize is that in so doing, you'll also essentially memorize the nominative and accusative noun endings because the definite article clues you into what the noun ending is. So Learn the song. That's the important part. Learn the full definite Learn article the paradigm. Learn the song. And then exercise number six, don't worry about the parsing, which is the first section in there. Uh, we're going to talk about parsing next week. Uh, but try your hand at the translation, and try your hand at the parsing if you want. You've got to parse it Excel's parsing. Uh, and then read chapter six. Sounds like a yeah. Read chapter six and then jump forward to chapter seven that talks about the definite article, and you'll you'll see that in there. Hey, put that back home. Yeah, okay. the Memorize homework. Nice nominative. Yeah. Wow. That was just my bad. Not too many things I was talking. Hey, Zach. How's it going? Were you here in time to hear us sing? Oh, Fortunately, I was not. I was going to see you. I feel less fun than I did last week. Well, you What's the full week? definite article exactly. paradigm? Where, where that? Where That's the ha heta. Oh. That's sweet goodness. That is the full Man, definite article paradigm. Memorize us. that chart. No, don't Apparently, do it. all you have to do is sing songs and just memorize Greek. Don't Sorry? So go back to the, the, the <laughs> uh, I'm going wrong way. Well, well, learning a language is so that, a lot that simpler part when you don't have that. to deal with other And you memorize these, but... That's why I'm learning it, right? Yeah, but yeah. What, I'm, what I'm telling you is if, if you memorize the definite article, you've What's memorized all of these it? endings. I got you, okay. The to only one that's different is nominative singular masculine, ha and os. But all the rest match with their definite yeah, article. I guess so. But let me, let me make sure. It's the card. All right. Thank you. No problem. Uh, we'll see you all next week at 2 o'clock. Feel free to call me for clarifications as you're studying and practicing. <laughs>